Let me start over. Praise the Lord and good evening. I hope you are enjoying your evening tonight. I pray that this has been a day like none other. I pray that at this time, your mind is focused. Your mind is settled on what it is our daddy God wants to share with us tonight. I am excited as always about the word of the Lord. I'm excited about the revelation. I'm excited about the deliverance that takes place after his word is shared. I'm excited that he just allow us to keep sitting at his feet and he keeps feeding us in his, in his word. He says, he that is hungry, let him come. He that is thirsty, let him come. So I am excited that every time I am hungry for the word, my daddy feeds me. Every time I'm thirsty for the word, my daddy gives me drink. So I am excited. I hope you are excited about these episodes. We are on episode 108. My God, I am so excited about that. God has been faithful. He has been consistent. And I just am excited about all the miracles and testimonies that are taking place because of sold out international listen i had i already shared it when when it, this live started the first slide that i shared was the live of the uh, was the pro promo for the shut-in coming on may the 5th listen i think about 30 or 40 people have already registered as long as you register um before that I have a cutoff. It'll be sometime in late April, maybe early May, because I want to make sure I have all the sheets. If you ever followed my ministry from years ago, they know about those white sheets. I consecrate those sheets. That is a whole process that I go through. It takes me days and weeks to go through that. But I want to consecrate sheets. Why, do, why am I consecrating sheets? If you're reading the New Testament, you, in the New Testament, um, it talks about handkerchiefs that they prayed over and people were healed. So I, God gave me this, um, this revelation to just pray over sheets years ago, I think. And I was actually looking back the last shut in that I did listen to this was in 2008. It is not until now we are in 2023 that God has released me to do another one. I have not had a shut in. I, I've, I've held them at churches, hotels held them at my home but god has not released me until now this shut in is so powerful it's a divine appointment i know y'all hear me say it and i don't want you to take that lightly oh she always saying it no when 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 i say that i know i already know that god is going to show up i already know miracles and signs are, are going to follow whatever he do and so when god released to me because we had some scheduling with the band. We had some scheduling um, issue conflicts with a few things. And I was saying, okay, well, I'm just going to have sold out like I always have it. And I'm just going to do, God, just do what you always do. And he interrupted me. He said, no, no, no. Time for a shut-in. And I got nervous because I'm like, oh, Lordy. Because I know what that entails for me. Um, but basically, when we shut in, it's if, if you ever been... Um, because I, I was raised when, when I came up, my first call was to be an intercessor. And I, I was so drawn to their passion in praying and just hearing. I was always the bishop that I was under under the, the, and during that time was Bishop L.B. Garris. He's gone on to glory now. But he would have me. You don't go with the people your age. You stay with the mothers. It was me and um, Pastor Erica Land. And we would have to stay with the mothers of the church. Well, everybody else went out on these hours and they did all this stuff. And I was in my early 20s. I was not married. So I was like, okay, why well, I can't go with you? He was like, no, you stay with the mothers of the church and they're going to pray and you're going to pray with them. And I remember praying for hours and hours. You getting up thinking, oh, I'm done. They're like, no, you ain't go back down. God ain't done working. So that's the type of shut in what we're talking about, where it's just you and God. Ain't nobody looking at you. Ain't nobody caring about what you're doing. Why? Because everybody trying to get theirs. They're trying to get from God, too. And so it'll be time for a personal prayer for you yourself to pray. It'll be a time for me to pray with you. It'll be a time for you just to bask in God's glory. And when, when are we done? Whenever God say so. And watch this. And during the shut in, and I want to share this, too, because I've already gotten the request. Is it going to be recorded? Absolutely not. No, no, no. You never. Well, I personally, God has never instructed me to record a shut in that that's very personal, that that's that's private because that's your time with God. I don't think that need to be for the world to see that that because it's breakthroughs, it's manifestations that's happening. God is coming through people getting filled with the Holy Ghost and all these different things. And you don't want to take that for granted and let anything stifle that move because they said, oh, I'm getting recorded. So even if you see my shut in, I mean, my um 
my services now we go live and sold out when they get to that point i tell my daughters turn the camera off so it's certain if, if you're thinking when i'm just gonna sit at home and i'm gonna watch the, the shed in on on facebook no you're not you may see some pictures of just me or whoever general pictures may go up saturday sunday but that shut in will not be recorded no i i can't i can't do that it will not be recorded um and and it is a if you will um fresh matter it's whatever god give me right there in that season it's not nothing i can study for i can consecrate i can fast which i will do um and, and the people that are coming they'll be doing that too but it's not it's not a shut-in is what god releases in that moment for those people that are in that building um, so I am excited about that. I hope you are just as excited as I am. And you already know, April 15th, I'll be speaking in Concord. Um, everything is dealing with prayer at, at this point. So April 15th, I will be um, speaking in, Con at, in Concord and it's behind the veil, beyond the veil. So I'll be dealing with that on April 15th. Then April 21st will be our first sold out service in the new location. We'll be in Oasis Shriners. And then after that, the next and, and the shut-in will be held in Oasis Shriners. Uh, it'll be a few chairs out, but you got to understand with a shut-in, we walk and we pray and we land before the Lord. So it has to be a lot of open space. So everything will be taking place. Um, shut-in, sold out services will be taking place at the Oasis in um, Charlotte, North Carolina. Okay, so that is, I think, all of my announcements. Are you ready for the word of God on tonight? I am so excited about this word on tonight. Listen, when, when, when God began to deal with me with this word, he began to tell me, he said, many of the people that come for deliverance, many of the people, because, and, and when I say many people that come for deliverance, I don't want you to think, oh, that's just the people that's going through. No, we all, have, we all, if you are anywhere in God, at some point in your life, at some point during your walk, you need a deliverance for something. You need deliverance from something. It could be a nasty attitude. It, it don't always have to be, oh, I was a drunk, or I was drinking, or I was on drugs, or I had a problem. With no, it could be that you just eat too much. It could be that you, you watch TV too much. If any, anything you have to break a habit, that is called you need deliverance. Okay. So, so God began to tell me, he says, daughter, listen. He says, what they need to understand is that their deliverance will come. Listen to this. Because you have people that wrestle with deliverance. Why I ain't delivered yet? Why I'm still dealing with this? Why I'm still going through this? Why I keep going around this same mountain over and over again? Why I keep, we, we talked about issues last week. So now we're we on another phase of this. Watch this. Why do I still keep dealing with the same demon over and over again? The same issue over and over again. All these people around me over and over again. Same people, different days, same problem. God began to tell me, he says, daughter, when they learn how to, when they make a decision, watch this on how you will confront the tactics of the enemy, then you will walk in complete deliverance. Who Lord, watch this. When you make a decision on how you gonna handle what Satan doing, mm, when you, and, and I, I love, cause Pastor Show said, Pastor Show said, what's your default setting? What's the first thing you do when Satan set you off? Watch this. But God is saying tonight, when you make a decision on how you gonna handle that, every time it comes, you will graduate from, oh, Lordy, you will graduate from dealing with that. Drop in the chat. It's graduation time. It's graduation time. It's graduation time. Listen to this. When I learn how to deal with the, what Satan is doing consistently, I graduate from it. I, I've shared this before. I tell my students this. I say, once you pass this test, I'm not giving it again. Why would I turn around and give you the same test that you just passed? Oh, Jesus. Did y'all hear that tonight? Why would I give my students the same test that they already mastered? You already passed the test. Why am I going to test you on it again? Do y'all hear Holy Spirit on tonight? Well, listen to this. So our scripture for tonight is Jude, J-U-D-E. Jude 1, verses 24 through 25. Listen to this. Jude 1, verses 24 through 25. Now unto him, this we call this the doxology. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you. Listen to these words. He's able to keep you from falling. Then not only that, but he's going to present you before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God, our savior, the glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forever. Woo. 
Oh God, listen. Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling. Do you want to be, you know, like, like you can be kept if you want to be kept. You know, you would hear that when you were like coming through and you were single and going through and they were like, you don't want to be kept. That's the mother tell you. Do you really want to be kept? It says, now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless without spot, without wrinkle, blameless before his, before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God, our savior be glory, majesty, dominion, and power both now and forever. <clears throat> Watch this. This is what Jude was saying, but you got to understand Jude got to this verse. This is all the way in verse 24 through 25. Oh, but he dealt with, listen, when we get off here, I need y'all promise me that you will go read the book of Jude. Woo, it's heavy. It's heavy because he deal with false doctrine. He deal with the pastors that were doing people wrong. He deal with how, how the leaders were, were living all kinds of sloppy lives, but you're still trying to preach to God. Oh, he dealt with that. Then he said, but you his chosen. Don't even worry about it. <laughs> Though they treat you dirty, don't even worry about it. He said, God got you. Listen, we got to deal with this line. So who is Jude? First, I need you to understand who is Jude and why did he write this letter? Listen, Jude is a blood relative of Jesus. But when, when Jude introduces himself, he don't even say, oh, y'all know I'm Jesus' bro I'm half brother, right? He ain't worried about that. Jude was so, Jude said, it's not important that I'm his half brother. What is more important is that I got relationship with him. Who, that I know him. Listen, it says, Jude considered himself only as a bond servant of Jesus Christ. The fact that he wanted himself to be known this way instead of introducing himself as Jude, the half brother of Jesus, tells us something of the humility of Jude and that the relative unimportance of being connected to Jesus by human relationship. He said, I, he said above, oh, Jesus. Listen, Jew said, it's more important to me that you know me because of my relationship with him, not my blood relationship. Oh, God, but my spiritual relationship with him. But what do we do today? We want to name drop. Honey, do you know that I know this famous person? You know, I sat on their pulpit. Honey, do you know they called me to open up for them? Do you know? We want to name drop. Jew said, ain't even important. He said, I want y'all to know me because of my relationship with him. Because you don't even have to know. Could you imagine if Jesus was your half brother today? <laughs> You'd be letting everybody know, honey, do you know who my, that Jesus is my half brother? So you know, I ain't got, to, we would be name dropping left and right. Every, every chance we got, we'd be letting people know. But Jew said that ain't even important. He said, what is more important is my relationship, my spiritual connection to him. Watch this. It says, without a doubt, Jude valued the fact that Jesus was his half brother and that they grew up in the same household. But even more valuable to him was his re new relationship with Jesus. To Jude, the blood of the cross that saved him was more important. Oh, listen to this. Jude said, the blood of the cross that saved him was more important than the family blood in his veins that related him to Jesus. So what's more important? Oh, gee, thank you, Holy Spirit. What should be more important to us today? It's not that you call me prophetess three. It's not that you call me pastor three. It's not that you call me doctor three. It is because of my relationship with him. Oh, yeah, because she walked with God. That girl right there, oh, when she prayed, God, heaven, listen. When that girl right there, when she lay hands, God himself show up. That you know that I have relationship with him. Drop in that chat. Know me by relationship. Oh, God. Know me by relationship. Know me by relationship. Know me by the fact that I serve God. Know me by the fact that it's not about the titles, it's about my lifestyle. It's not about the titles, it's about my character. It's not about what I say or do. It is, it's more about who I do and I say it for. Who am I representing? Ah, oh God, listen, let, let, let me keep going. So why did Jude write this letter? Listen, why did Jude write this letter? Jude wrote to those who were, he says, this letter ain't even for everybody. <laughs> Listen, Jude wrote this letter to those that were called. Okay. Those that were called. 
this is not an evangel an evangelistical uh, type of track that I will be passing out or you will be passing out. This letter deals with things that believers, us, we need to hear, but we often don't want to. Drop in the chat how many times, listen, how many times have you heard anybody preach from Jude? Have you heard anybody preach from Jude more than 10 times? But we hear Matthew, we hear the Psalms, we hear all the Old Testament, because y'all know I'm an Old Testament. Hey, I love it. We hear all of them, but it's very rare. And I, in fact, I think this may be my first time even teaching from the book of Jude. It's very rare that we read, that we, that we hear this. And God began to tell me, he said, because people skipping over. He said, if they would read Jude, they quit questioning, well, how pastors doing that? Well, how pastors dealing with that? Well, how, how can they preach and then act? The, it's all in here. Blew my mind. I was looking for this one particular scripture. Now unto him who is able to, because I kept hearing it. And I know it's always what we do at the, at the benediction, especially in the Baptist church. We use it as the benediction or they call it the doxology. And I begin to say, and I begin to say, okay, well, let me see what's really to all of this. What's really to all this? And when I started reading, I went, and, and my, my team know, my mentees know, I went all the way to the scripture I was looking for. And then I had to bag all the way out and start from the beginning of the book and read what is Jude talking about here? Because I didn't want to just take, oh, this is the doxology. It's just what we say. And God is able to keep us from falling and he going to present us faultless. But why was Jude saying that? And you get to the real root of the problem. Watch this. It says, Jude, Jude said, I wrote this book to those that were called. Listen, he says, because they needed to hear what what I had to say, but they don't. They often don't want to. Jude identified his readers as Christians in three specific ways. He said, "This is how I am going to know that you are the called." Watch this. He says, "A, a called person is a person is a Christian because God has called him." The important thing is to answer when He calls you. Uh oh. Jude said, "He says I'm writing this for three specific three specific." Christian types. They are called. He says, when God called you, he said, the important thing is that you answer him. He says, two, they are sanctified by God. This means that they were set apart. You're not like everybody else. You can't do what everybody else say. You can't go where everybody else go. You, you, you know you're different. You set apart. Listen, that's what sanctified means. Set apart. It ain't got nothing to do with you wearing no long dress. Nothing. It says, are you set apart? Can they tell you're not like everyone else? Can they tell you are different? That is why it should be some difference from the world and the church. Come as you are, but you're not going to stay. Because if you come, if you come as you are and you never change, then something I'm preaching ain't right. Because this word is active. It's alive and it changes us. Oh, God. Listen. So what is the, what is, he says, I identify, he said, I identify Christians in three specific ways they are called they are sanctified and he said three oh watch this three they are preserved in jesus jesus christ is their guardian and their protection their guardian and their protector he said that's how i know who, who, who i'm he said he says this is how i identify who this letter is going to this letter is for the called this letter is for the sanctified and this letter is for the protected who listen Listen, the called, the sanctified, and the protected or the preserved. Drop that in the chat. The called, the sanctified, and the preserved or the protected. Watch this. He says, I found it necessary to write to you, exhorting you to contend earnestly. This is verse three. I'm going to back up so we can get all the way down to, to, the, to, to why he wrote this letter and what's behind it. He said, I found it necessary. So in verse three, he says, I found it necessary to write to you, exhorting you to contend earnestly for the faith, which was once for all delivered, what was once and for all delivered to the saints. He says, I'm writing this to you because I need you to contend for the faith. Uh oh, what does, what, listen, exhorting you to contend earnestly for the faith. Listen, contend and when he made it in this, when he, wrote it in this translation in the greek translation contend has a lot to do with wrestling watch this it, it, it's an athletic word it's, it's from the word it means like a wrestling mat watch this 
It is strengthened form in it is a strengthened form of the word meaning to agonize. Uh oh. Therefore, contend speaks of hard and diligent work. He says, I need you to work hard. I need you to work earnestly for the faith. Oh, Jesus, watch this. And this is not talking about your faith to believe. Oh, Lord, this is good tonight. This is not talking about your faith to believe. He says, he says, the verb translated contend earnestly is, is meaning present infinitive, showing that the Christian struggle is continuous. Listen, I exhort, he says, I exhort you to contend earnestly for the faith. He said, you're going to always have to do this. It's not just a one and done. He said, you're going to always have to fight. You're going to always have to wrestle for the faith. Listen, he says, we contend earnestly for the faith because it is valuable. Oh, oh Jesus. You fight for something that is valuable. Watch this. Now unto him who is able to present us faultless. Listen, now unto him. Listen, listen, I'm gonna read that again. Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling. Why, 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 is he, why does he have to keep us from falling? Because if we're contending for the faith, listen, if we're contending for the faith, we are contending because our faith is valuable. And Satan's job is to always try to steal our faith. He roams around sinking, seeking whom he may devour. He is a thief. He come to kill, steal, and destroy your faith. So I fight earnestly for the faith. Watch this. If I don't have no faith, he ain't fighting me. <laughs> oh, God. They ain't never going through. Because he's not fighting them. They don't have nothing he wants. Oh, God. A thief never breaks in a house that's empty. Oh, Listen. A thief never breaks in a house that's empty. They're always going to break in a house that got valuables. They done peeped out. Oh, she got, a, she got a TV up on that wall. Oh, she got all them electronics. Oh, I seen them boxes out there by her trash. So that means she got some valuable stuff in there. Every time I, every time I drive by, I see a furniture truck. Oh, then I seen this truck. Oh, and I see, she always getting deliveries. So I know it must be something valuable. Oh, God. In her house. So what is Satan saying? If, if you're not, if, if when you don't contend for the faith, if you don't have a, a reason to contend for the faith, and I'm going to deal with what, what, what I mean when I say the faith, because I'm not talking about your faith to believe. Watch this. When, if you're not, if you are never in a struggle, I'm never struggling to contend for the faith. I'm never, because that means you, you don't have anything valuable in you. Woo, Jesus. Listen, I, I, oh God, let, let, let me keep going. It says, we contend earnestly for the faith because it is valuable. Listen, he says, exhorting you to contend earnestly for the faith. If we emphasize the word you, listen, he says, exhorting you to contend earnestly for the faith. That means that we see that, that this was something that Jude wanted each individual Christian to do. I can't do it for my daughters. They got to do it for themselves. I can't do it for my grandson. He got to do it for himself. Mama, uh, Gritton, Mimi can love you to death, but love you to life, but I can't, I can't contend for the faith for you. It's a personal thing. Listen to this. It says, it says, that is why he says, exhorting you to contend earnestly for the faith. There are many ways that every Christian can contend earnestly for the faith. Watch this. We contend for the faith in a positive sense when we give an unflinching witness. Uh-oh. Watch this. If you haven't even caught this by now, faith is the truth. <laughs> I contend for the truth. I'm not talking about my faith to believe. I contend for the truth. What, am, what, am, what do you mean, Dr. Three? You contend for the truth. I contend for the truth of God. Whatever he say, it is. I contend for his word. Whatever his word says, it is. I speak his word. I contend for it. I fight for it. I would defend it. Listen, how do we contend for the faith in a positive sense? When we give an unflinching witness or we testify. Oh God, watch this. When we strengthen the hands of, another way I can, I can contend for the faith, the truth, which is the word of God. I contend for the word of God. I fight for the word of God when I give my testimony. 
And my testimony is going to always lead back to God, not Dr. Three. My testimony is going to be of my past and what God did. My testimony is going to be, I got the victory, but God is always going to get the glory. My testimony will be God's word is true. God said it in his word and he did it. God, God said he was going to provide and he did it. God said he would never see me begging for bread and he did it. God told me I would never be in lack and he did it. God did everything he said he promised in Deuteronomy 28. Oh God. And he did it. That's how we contend for the faith, which is the truth. Watch this. Not only that, but we contend for the faith when we give to those that are preaching the gospel. When you sow, oh boy, here we go. When you sow, you're contending for the faith. You're helping me to spread this gospel. When you sow, you're, helping me, you, you're making it possible that we can go to Oasis. We can go to these nice event places. We can go on and do all these things and have all these different type of ministry functions. When you, when you sow, you're contending for the faith. You're fighting for the truth. How are you fighting? Because you're helping to spread the gospel. <laughs> contend for the faith. Watch this. We contend for the faith in a positive sense again when we testify. When, 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 when we give to those that are spreading the gospel. We contend for the faith in a practical sense when we live uncompromising Christian lives. Listen, when we live, oh God, I love you. When we live a sold out life, we're contending for the faith. I live a sold out life because I want to live the truth of his word. Oh God, I live a sold out life because I want somebody to look at my witness, look at my character and say, it's something different about you. Can you tell me about, I'm contending for the faith, which is his word, which is the truth. Watch this. It says, the faith does, and this is what I was waiting to get to. Oh, let, let one more thing. We contend for the faith in a negative way. Watch this. When we withhold, uh-oh, support. When we withhold encouragement. Watch this. When we, when we withhold encouragement, when we withhold support, or when we are too scared to share our testimony. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. When we are too scared to share our testimony. And, and this is the thing I love about God. You never have to say, you know, in Ephesians 3, it says, that you don't have to do all that. You don't need to quote, not, you don't have to quote one scripture. Live the life before them. Who Jesus, I love you. Live the life before them and give them the opportunity to ask you. You never seem to be upset. What's going on with you? That's when you give your testimony. I pray and I, I start my day off with God every morning. And I just know that God strengthens me. You ain't got to get no deep. Let me lay hands on. And I, you ain't have to do all that. Listen, your whole life can contend for the faith. Your whole life, your whole walk, what you say out your mouth. Because I can guarantee you some people will never read a Bible, but they read you every day. They study everything you do. They watch everything you say. And if you ever say, oh, honey, I love the Lord, I'm praising God. And the minute you mess up, I knew it. I knew it. They just sit and they watch you. Listen, watch this. Drop in the chat. I'm going to contend for the faith. I'm going to contend for the faith. Listen, for all means, listen, the faith doesn't mean our own personal belief. Watch this. Or faith in the sense of our trust in God. This phrase the phrase, the faith means the essential truths of the gospel. I will fight for the gospel. I will fight for what God says. I will share what God says. I will testify to the goodness of God. Listen, it says this phrase, faith means the essential truths of the gospel that all true Christians, believers, disciples of Christ hold in common. We must contend earnestly for the truth. Not the truth of what Dr. Three said, but the truth of his word. He said his righteous will never be. He said, when the righteous cry, I heal them. I hear them. He said, I'm the head and not the tail above or not beneath. I believe all that. That's the truth of the word. Oh God. So do you believe it? Are you testifying to it? Is that what you're speaking out of your mouth? Watch this. Then verse four, and, it's, and, I want, and I was backing up. In verse four, he says, he says, let me see, I, I don't want to get ahead of myself. For It says, the essential truths of the gospel that all true Christians hold in common, we must earnestly, we must contend earnestly for the truth. 
which is the faith. For all means that this faith is for everybody. Listen to this. We don't have an option to simply make up our own faith and still be true to God. This faith is for all, but today it isn't that popular. Watch this. Today, is it, it isn't popular to really believe in the faith once for all delivered to the saints. Instead, most people want to believe in the faith they make up as they go along. Making up rules as I go along in life. That's what I'm going to just believe in. That's my truth. You didn't heard it. I, I'm going to speak my truth. Really? Because the truth I know is the word of God. So what is your truth? Oh, listen. Drop that in the chat. The only truth I know is the word of God. Ooh, listen, because you got to be careful of a lot of this stuff we hear and we want to repeat it. I'm going to just speak my truth. OK, speak your truth. Oh, Lord, you know, scary when you think about it. Right. Listen, he says he says it says it says instead, most people want to believe in the faith that they make up as they go along and decide it's right for them. More people believe in the faith that's in my heart, my personal truth. than they believe in the faith in the faith once for all delivered to the saints i want to believe in my own personal truth i want to believe in the truth of this, what this bible is saying oh jesus my own personal truth is you did me wrong i'm gonna get you back i don't want to believe the truth in the bible that says vengeance is mine say the lord uh oh i want to believe oh i'm cutting you off okay but the bible say forgive him 70 times 70 in a day <laughs> which truth you believe in well, it's tight, but it's right tonight. Listen, listen, let, let, let me keep going because I don't want to run out of time tonight. Listen, verse four. So we in Jude one verse four says we should contend for the faith. We need to contend for the faith because there are danger. Listen, listen to this. It says we need to contend for the faith. Why? Because there are dangerous men among Christians, men and women. For certain men have crept in. Listen, well, listen to what the Bible says. They have crept in unnoticed who long ago were marked out for this condemnation, ungodly men and women who turned the grace of our God into lewdness. Listen, and deny the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. Listen, Judas said, you got to continue. You have to fight for the truth because there's some people out there spreading some type of what they call the gospel and it's not the truth. He said, so I need those that know God. I need those that are Christians. I need those that are blood washed. I need those that are born again. I need y'all to speak up. I need y'all to stop being timid. I need y'all to testify because it's a whole remnant of people out here that, that's got some type of message going on and it ain't about our God. And Jude was angry. He said, I need y'all to contend for the faith. Because we wonder, and, and, and you, you know, you've been there, you wonder, how can pastors or leaders do this and still get up in the, pre in the pulpit and preach? How can they treat people like this and still get in the pulpit and say, but God has got to look? And we're looking like, really? Because I just saw what you did. Jude addressed it. He said, they, they mixing this stuff up. They got their, what did I say earlier? They got their truth. They don't have the truth of God. They mixing some stuff up, intertwining some stuff and trying to present it like it's the gospel. And Jude said, that's not going to work. I need y'all to fight for this truth. I need y'all to fight for this word. I need y'all to fight for what our Savior died for. I, can, you, can you fight? Oh, Lord. Help me, Holy Ghost. Listen, he says, so he was warning us. This is why. Then we get down to verses 5 through 19. And that's why y'all would tonight, please go back and read this. Verses 5 through 19, he deals with the characteristics. He point them out. I was sitting there reading. It's like, oh, my God. And I'm going to be honest. When I was reading, I was like, oh, this is this person. This is this person. This is this. And I was just like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. And it says in verses 5 through 19, he gives characteristics of the type of Christians and, and, and how God going to judge them. He said, God going to, because we keep wondering, well, how can they do? He said, Jude, show it. Read it for yourself. It shows how he gonna deal with them. It talks about how he gonna deal with them. He said they ain't getting away with nothing. <laughs> so they ain't getting away with nothing. He said, don't be concerned about that. He said, what I need you to be concerned about is contending for this faith. It's for fighting for this truth. Watch this. Then he says, verses twenty through twenty one. He says, and he said, before you can contend for this faith, he said, I need you to look at yourself. He gives us some direction. He says, but you, beloved, building yourself up on the most holy faith, watch this, praying in the Holy Spirit, 
listen, praying in the Holy Spirit, keeping yourselves in the love of God and looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. He gives us three things to do. He said, this is how you're going to contend for the faith. This is what is going to help you. He says, build yourself up on your most holy faith. This is one way that we can keep ourselves in the love of God. It means when he says, build yourself up on your most holy faith. It means keep growing spiritually. All y'all that's sitting here tonight. This is what you're doing. You are growing spiritually. He says, this will help you to keep building up. Jude said, build yourselves up on the most holy faith. That means, listen to this. That means that we are responsible for our own spiritual growth. It is not my, if I don't even get on here live, you still should be studying. Just because I don't do the prayer Monday through every week at, at uh, what time is it? Uh, 5.30 a.m. You should still be getting up having prayer. Uh-oh. It is your responsibility. I just jump started for you and give you tools and show you how to do things because that's just that's just me. That's just what I do. I, every strategy God showed me, I show it to his people. It's up to you to keep doing it. You got to have a disciplined life. You got to know that, okay, every night before I go to bed, I'm not looking at TV, but I'm going to get in my word. I'm going to have prayer time. I'm going to listen to my music. I'm going to have time with God before I close my eyes. When I get up in the morning, same routine. Then I'm going to get dressed. When I And you, it, it becomes a hat. What, what, what did they say? 21 days of anything a form a habit. So I was trying to figure out. I said, if people did that 40-day fast with me, they should still be on 100. Because I'm really crank. We're going to start another one. So I'm like, after you've done it 40 days, you should be in the habit of doing it. He says, build yourselves up on your most holy faith. It means that we cannot wait for spiritual growth to just happen or expect others to make us grow. It is not Dr. Three's job to say, did you read your Bible today? Did you, were you fasting? Were you praying? Were you doing this? Were you doing that? It ain't even my job. And I don't check for people like that. That's just not me. My mentees will tell you, I ain't asked them, did you, how, how long you been studying? You been in your word? Because the thing about a mentor, we can always tell. I can tell when you've been in your word. I, I may never say anything to you. I'm like, all right. All right. See, but it's your job. Listen, it's your job to make sure it says here. We cannot wait for spiritual growth to just happen. If I want to grow in God, I know it's something I got to do. I can't just sit here and be like, well, God, I'm trying to grow in you, but ain't nothing happening. He said, well, you ain't going to know me. And let, what does it Eat me to become me. Oh, God. The more I eat that word, the more I become like him. The more I study that word, the more I take on his characteristics. The more I, the more I meditate, the more I know his voice. So if I'm not doing any of that, I'm not growing. Oh, Jesus. Okay, let me keep going. It says, praying in the Holy Spirit. Praying in the Holy Spirit. This is another way to keep ourselves in the love of God. The battle against wrong living and wrong teaching is a spiritual battle requiring prayer in the spirit. Listen, the Holy Spirit may help us pray by giving us the right words to say when we pray. Why do I pray in the spirit? Because he's going to give me what I should say. When I go in my heavenly language, He uh, nine times out of 10, he come down low right back what he meant. Then there are times, watch this, then there are times when I go in prayer and I'm just praying in the spirit the whole entire time. And when, when I get like that, I know God is it, something between the Holy Spirit and God that they work it out on my behalf that I don't even need to know about. Let them work it out. It's not my concern. Oh, God, let them work. Oh, Jesus, that's for somebody. Why I keep going in tongues every time I go in prayer? Baby, they working something out. They don't need you. They don't need your input. Oh, Jesus. Listen, when I pray in the spirit, it builds up my spirit, man. Okay, watch this. It says the Holy Spirit may help us by, by praying, by giving us the right words to say when we pray. He may speak through groanings which cannot be uttered. Romans 8 and 26. Or the Holy Spirit may do, may do it through the gift of tongues. Speaking, that's what I was, my holy language. A gift God gives to, to the seeking hearts, which want to communicate, which want to communicate with him on a deeper level and normal conversation. People always ask me, and I'm putting together some stuff for my mentees in India, God's girl in India. I'm working on some stuff for them about praying. They want to know more about praying in the Holy Spirit. All you have to do is ask God. Listen, he said, it's a gift that I can give if they would ask me for it. He said, and not, not mimic what you hear, 
from other people because there i remember a time believing god for the spirit um for the gift of speaking in tongues and i was like well i ain't getting nothing i mean it's just and and and, and it, i was just getting kind of frustrated because i'm looking at everybody around me getting and i'm just still sitting here like but praise god i remember it like it was yesterday i had already asked god for the gift and i could hear it in my ear listen to this i could hear it in my ear and my cousin Avis, I was telling her about it. I said, I can hear tongues in my ear all the time. She looked at me. She said, well, Liz, why don't you just say what you're hearing? And I was like, what? She said, why don't you just say what you hear in your ear? I, I was sitting at the table getting Whitney and Brittany ready for school. They were going to uh, daycare. Had, so that means they were about one or two years old. Getting them ready for daycare. They probably weren't even two yet. They, had, they were probably one. Getting them ready for daycare. And I was just, you know, talking to the Lord and I began to hear it get loud and loud of my ear. So I just started speaking and I'm telling you, I spoke in the Holy Spirit for nonstop. I think they missed the van and everything because I didn't even open the door. I was just gone. And I remember calling my grandmother, Mother Paul, and, and I told her and we just, well, she went up and I went up. We were just going in the Holy Spirit and it was the most, oh my God, I could just, it's like I can imagine, it's like I can still feel that feeling because I had been asking him for it. And my cousin was like, Avis said, why don't you just say what you're hearing? And, and, and I will be honest, at first it does sound because it's just like a baby learning to talk. It's a new language to you. If you if you learning how to speak Spanish today, it is not going to sound like somebody that was born speaking Spanish. It's like a baby learning to talk. The more you speak it, the more mature it sounds. The more you speak it, the, the more, more the more words will form. Listen, listen. So he says, praying in the spirit, it builds up. It, build, it will build you up. It will give you the right words to say. Then he says, the last one, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. This is the third way that we can keep ourselves in the love of God. As we keep the blessed hope of Jesus soon return alive in our hearts. This effectively keeps us in the love of God and helps us to not give away our faith or to not give away our truth or to not dumb down our truth. Why? Because I know he's coming back. Mm -hmm. I got to be ready when he come back. Oh, Lord. So that keeps me sharing this gospel. That keeps me sharing this truth. That keeps me giving my testimony. That keeps me living a life before men. Watch this. Then he says, take a look outward to those around you. Jude tell us to show compassion on others. He says, take a look upward, verses 24 through 25. He says, take a look upward to the God of all glory. That is when he says, now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling, to keep you from falling, and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. Now unto him. Jude closed his letter with this famous doxology. We call it a brief declaration of praise or you may call it the benediction that they, you often hear jews doxology reminds us of god's care and our destiny he says listen i don't care what these other religions are doing i don't care about these false doctrines i don't care about these about these preachers that's, that's doing whatever they're doing and mixing their truth he says for you the chosen uh oh for you the called for you the believers for you the blood washed, for you that, that, that will lay down your life for this gospel, for those of you that know him to be your daddy God, for those of you that know him in, in all that he do, for those of you that know him in the power of his resurrection and in his suffering, for those of you that know him to be a provider, to be a way maker, to be a miracle God, miracle worker. He said, I'm talking to y'all. <laughs> and he says, look up to God of all glory. He said he is able to keep you from falling. And he's going to present you faultless. He reminds us that the answer lies only in the power of God, who is able to keep us from falling. And you are not able to keep yourself. You say, understand this. You can't keep yourself. Only God can keep you. If God don't keep you, you won't be kept. If God don't. Let it, I could stay there all day. He says. He is able to keep you. And you are not able to keep yourself. Here at the end, Jude concluded with the recognition that it is ultimately God who keeps us from stumbling. Listen, God is the one that keeps us from stumbling and falling. 
What is this? And I'm going to close it with this. So what is it that God is keeping, Dr. Three? <laughs> oh, Lord, I love you. I love you. I love you. What is it that he's keeping? Is he keeping my flesh? Woo, this is good tonight. Is he keeping my flesh? What is it that he's actually keeping? Oh, God, I love you tonight. He is keeping his word. Uh-oh, here we go. Remember we talked about them issues? But his word gonna stay. That word he spoke of you, that's what he's keeping. And watch it. We say, I am able to keep you. And remember he said, he says, contend for the faith, contend for the truth. The truth is his word. So I'm fighting for his word. So because I fight for his word, I contend for his word. I'm testifying. I'm living it. I'm walking it out. He says, so therefore I'm going to keep you from falling. But when, what I am not real, I'm not keeping your flesh. I'm keeping my word. That's it. Oh God. I'm keeping my word that's in you. Uh oh. So we wonder how some people came. They always going through. Is his word in you? Because his word, if his word is in you, he going to keep his word. Ooh, listen. God is going to keep his word. When his word is in you, you won't fall. Mm, God. When his word is in you and you contending for the truth, I'm fighting for the truth of his word. That means every time the enemy comes and says, you're going to lose your job. Mm -mm. God said his seed will never be begging bread. I cast that down. Whoa. Uh -oh. I cast down every thought and every imagination that will try to exalt itself against the power and knowledge of my God. That's what I do. When the enemy come in, you know you ain't going to make it. Ain't nobody else ever done that. God gives me witty inventions. It's in his word. God said, I'm above and not beneath. He said, I will always be the head and not the tail. He said, I will be the lender and not the borrower. So if I'm the lender, that means I'm always going to have money. <laughs> oh, God. Listen, so he's keeping his word that is in me. If ain't no word there, what is he keeping? Drop that in the chat. He's going to keep his word. So I got to eat his word to become him. I got to eat his word because he's going to keep his word. Why? Because heaven and earth are going to pass away, but his word going to stink. It says, he is not keeping you. He is keeping his word that's in you. This flesh is fickle. Listen, and it's full of sin. Watch this. Romans 8, 5 through 9. Those who live according to the flesh have their minds set on what the flesh desires. But those who live in accordance with the spirit have their minds set on what the spirit desires. The mind governed by the flesh is death. Oh boy. The mind that is governed by the flesh is death. It is, but the mind governed by the spirit is life and peace. Listen, the mind governed by the flesh is hostile to God. It's against him. It does not submit to God's law, nor can it do it. Listen, the mind that is ruled by the flesh can't even do this word. There is no truth. They can't contend for the faith because it ain't in them. Ain't no truth in them. Oh my God, listen. This is the word. Verse nine, verse eight. So let me go back. Verse seven, the mind governed by the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law, nor can it do it. Verse eight, those who are in the realm of the flesh cannot even please God. Ooh, Jesus, watch this. Verse nine. You, however, are not in that realm of the flesh, but you are in the realm of the spirit. If indeed the spirit of God lives in you. Listen, if I'm doing everything Jude telling me, the spirit lives in me. Oh, Jesus, watch this. Galatians 9. Galatians 9 speaks of 15 works of the flesh. God, if you want to know what these works of the flesh are, read Galatians 9. Watch this. God keeps his word, period. That is why we should strive to be full of the word. When the enemy, Isaiah 59 and 19, when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Lord will lift up a standard against it. I mean, the, the spirit, the, the, when the enemy comes in, when he tries you and he will try you, he says the spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against him and stop him. That is his word. The word will stop Satan in his tracks every time. But when we, but when he come, we don't even, do you even quote the word? I'm just going to call Dr. Three to see what she thinks because I just thought. Why you just, why you just didn't combat him with the word? Listen, because what's in you going to come out. When you get in trouble, what's in you going to come out? 
Watch this. Listen. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall forever stand. Matthew 24, 35. God keeps his word because God is not like man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Numbers 23 and 19. He said, I can't lie. <laughs> he said, once you speak my word, I got to come through. He said, once you speak my word, it can't return unto me, boy. It has accomplished all I sent it out to do. Watch this. Then Jew closes. He says, he will present you before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. As God is faithful, we won't have to slink back shamefacedly. He said, I'm going to present you before my father. And you can go with authority. You can go with boldness. You can go with clarity. You can go with quoting the word. Listen. He said, with exceeding joy. Then he calls it out. Who alone is wise be glory and majesty, dominion and power both now and forever. He, this reminds us, Juice, I'm letting y'all know. God's wisdom, glory, and power is unto all ages. He said it, it, it's, it's never going to change. He will always be glorious. He will always have all dominion. He will always be the highest ranking supreme God. There is none like him in all the earth. There's none above him, none but no, no, no one like him. No one can stand beside him. He is God. And he is the reason why we contend for the faith. He is the reason why we fight for the truth. He is the reason why we do what we do. He is the reason why we why we represent him. He is the reason why, because he's coming back. And we have to be ready. Listen, I love you. I love you. If you want to sow, the information is on the bottom of the screen. This is your seed of truth tonight. Oh, God. I'm sowing my seed of truth. I'm sowing my seed of truth. I'm going to fight for this truth. I'm going to fight. Okay. What is God saying? <clears throat> when you sow your seed of truth, he said, what you are telling me, listen to this, because I want y'all to hear. Here, I'm a strong believer in naming your seed. Somebody named their seed. They, they did like a $25 seed last time I was on here and then turn around. Not even, not even 12 hours later, got a return of 6,000. I'm an advocate. It is something God has always told me to do. He says, daughter, he said, I know I have you sowing all these different places. He said, but every time I have you to sow, it's for a reason. Every time I have you to sow, I need you to name the seed. Every time I have you to sow, I need you to be purposeful. Watch this. So tonight, your seed is my seed of truth. What are you saying? Because everything that I speak out of my mouth that God says about me, it is. Oh, God, help me, Holy Ghost. I feel this tonight. Everything I speak out of my mouth, Concerning my children, it is. Everything I speak out of my mouth concerning my, 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 my finances, it is. Everything I speak out of my mouth concerning my health, it is. Why? Because I'm speaking the word. Woo, Jesus. Because I'm speaking the word. Listen, listen. Get your seed in the ground tonight. Oh, God. Get your seed in the ground, in the ground tonight. Listen, I love you. There's absolutely nothing you can do about it. Keep those dates in mind. And I need y'all to register for that shut-in May 5th. The information is on my page. Register, 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 register. It's on Eventbrite. It is a free event. It's just that I'm, I'm going to consecrate sheets. So I need to know who the sheets are going to. Listen, I need you to register. I need you to get your family. And many of you that's been to my shut-ins, it is for men, women, and children. Not just, not just women. It's not a women's event. Listen, it's for, for the everyone. It's for everyone. Listen, but you need to be in the house. This is not something I'm going to do and just start mailing sheets. No, you need to be there. It's about the atmosphere that night. It's about what God going to drop in the house that night. That is May 5th, but I would I, I really want to see you guys April 15th and in Concord, North Carolina. Then I definitely want to see you April 21st at our new location for Sold Out Live. Listen, I love you. I love you. I love you. God bless you and have a Perfect night of sweets. Listen, I decree and declare that your sleep shall be sweet tonight. Oh, I decree and declare that tonight you shall have prophetic dreams. I decree and to declare tonight that God will download in you your next move in him. I love you and God bless you.